Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. I'm so excited for this reading vlog because here's the deal. The month of March is absolutely unreal when it comes to book releases that I'm personally excited for. The last vlog I uploaded was documenting one of my most anticipated releases of the year for a trilogy I was already reading. Well, this vlog is going to be documenting the reading process of a first book to a new series by one of my all-time favorite authors, aka another highly anticipated release, and I could not be more excited. So without further ado, let's talk about the TBR for this video. Alrighty, so my primary book for this video is The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is like a investigative detective murder mystery but it's set in like a fantasy sci-fi landscape i love this author's writing so much i've read all of his books that he's put out i'm pretty sure and this again is the first book to a new series i also hear it centers some really unique but very likable characters that have a very uh unusual relationship let's say and there's like a lot of humor as well as like a great core central mystery given that this is kind of a mystery thriller-esque story i do have a second book on the tbr if i end up finishing this pretty quickly and that is The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. This is book two to the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. I read book one in January and was really delighted by it. This is a much lower stakes fairy tale leaning charming series. I feel like I'll be able to read it pretty quickly. This book could be dark. The last book I read is pretty dark so this is kind of a palette cleanser before my next vlog, which will also center a pretty dark book as well. But anyway, this is my TBR for this video. I'm so excited about both of these books and I can't wait to document the reading process of this from beginning to end. Also, can we talk about how beautiful this is? No dust jacket, stunning. It's currently Sunday, like early afternoon. Um, Clay and I do not have grand plans. It's also like a holiday weekend, so I have a little bit of extra time off. So I really feel like I'll be able to get some excellent reading uh, in the books. Before I read though, I do have, look at all these, <laughs> I do have some cleaning up I need to do. Uh, namely this giant book pile behind me. So I am going to tackle and do some picking up around the house and then settle in and enjoy not only a spotless home, but an anticipated release. It sounds like truly the perfect Sunday. So let's just go ahead and get started. house is feeling so much more put together. I even opened the door because the air is nice, but the kitchen is cleaned up. I'm defrosting some stuff for dinner. The dining room is looking amazing. And I finished my taxes. I mean, truly, what a productive day. So now I'm going to completely relish in starting my book, watching the traders because I have an episode to catch up on. And I think Clay and I are going to get a latte right now. I'm just going to relax. Just going to relax. I'm so I swear, finishing your taxes is one of the greatest feelings of like, yes, <laughs> that I feel every year. I hate it so much. Hi friends, just been sitting here with my latte and I'm happy to report I've read 70 pages of The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. And I'm really happy to report that so far I'm really liking this book and it's also proving to be very strange in a lot of ways that I personally really enjoy. So the setup of this is that it's going to be a kind of murder mystery turned into like larger political corruption tale. We're following our two main characters, Din and Anna. So far, the story is primarily told from Din's point of view. It's set in a fantasy world that definitely has like a sci-fi lean to it. It's basically this empire that has all of these different rings and walls because on one side of the empire there's this giant sea where massive leviathans come during the wet season and like try to break into and destroy the empire and the empire pledges hey pay our taxes do our jobs 
you know, all these things, I'll protect you from these Leviathans. So that's kind of like the buy-in for the citizens of this place. We find ourselves on the very far reaches of the empire, close to this seawall, and a murder has taken place, which introduces us to our two main characters. First is Din, and he is something called like an etcher. Basically, you can get like modifications in this world. There's like kind of less invasive modifications that help you be like stronger, have better fitness, and then there's very intense modifications that will completely transform you. And there are people who fall into something called the sublime category where they've had a change made that makes them like mentally more capable. And Din has had a change made where he has like a photographic memory. He can remember anything he sees um, and refer back to it. So obviously for investigations, he's like a very useful figure. So we find him, he's very reserved. He's very quiet and calm. He has kind of a mysterious background, but in general, he doesn't, he's not very boisterous as an individual. So he's coming into this crime scene for his boss and he gets there and they find a very strange happenstance. Basically a powerful engineer who normally helps manage these seawalls is found dead. And he's found dead with having a tree like spontaneously combust out of his body. There seems to be contagions in this world, like organic sort of, fungi sort of things that can happen like clearly science and sci-fi has embedded itself in this fantasy world in some capacity i'm only 75 pages in but even so this spontaneous tree combusting out of this body is unusual din does his job he takes you know his mental photos he needs to take and then we run into our other main character anna who is a very 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 talented investigator but she's also incredibly eccentric like so weird, so straightforward. And I've immediately found myself one, these two characters could not be more different and their dynamic is strange and hilarious. And Din trying to like, I don't know, survive the whims of Anna is very entertaining to see, but it cannot be denied that Anna is an incredibly talented investigator. She, it kind of gives like Sherlock Holmes and Watson vibes, um, but like amped up even more in some capacities, but they're investigating this murder. This murder though is clearly not straightforward. Other parties are involved. Sorry, the camera died. So I started, oof, really just wiped out. So I started dinner, but I think I was in the middle of saying, this book very much gives like Sherlock and Watson vibes with almost like a dash more absurdity. It started so quickly and I feel like I immediately grew a likeness towards both the characters, both in their uniqueness and their interactions are just like really fun to read. The mystery itself also is moving really quickly. I don't feel like the author's wasting any time. Stop, like the first chapter is us like examining this crime scene like for context. Um, and I do think there's like multiple different mysteries happening at once. Like one, as a reader, we're trying to uncover like how this world functions and works, which is kind of fun for us to tease out. Two, we have this initial murder mystery that we're introduced with, but obviously there's so much more at play like behind the scenes. So like, Figuring out that mystery, but also in combination, like trying to understand the world functionally, how it works, will create what I imagine will be like double satisfying, you know? But anyway, quick 75 pages read, really enjoying it. And uh, I just really enjoy Robert Jackson Bennett's writing and his characters. He's so good at adding humor to his books while not making them any less serious. I feel like it's a hard line to walk, you know? But anyway, Back to cooking dinner. At dinner is a comfort fave. We're making some Japanese curry. I had some leftover stuff in the fridge too to use up, which was very handy. So this is just going to be simmering away and we'll be eating probably in about like an hour and a half. And dinner is almost ready. Just steaming off some broccoli and we'll be able to enjoy. Delicious. I will be reading again soon, but we started Masters of Air tonight. And so far, honestly, not too bad. That's Austin Butler, not playing Elvis, but does sound like Elvis. Matilda and all of her friends have settled into bed. Isn't that right, Millie? <laughs> Clay had a dentist appointment, an early AM dentist appointment, came home with bean and cheese tacos, my man. And uh, coffee's being brewed. I'm about to sit down and do some more reading of the tainted cup. And I'm gonna eat some tacos, apparently. Hello, good morning. I'm up and dressed. I have been caffeinated wearing a little springy color to enjoy the honestly beautiful weather we're having today. 
but I wanted to do a reading update because I have in fact been reading. I am on page 140 of this book and I'm so happy to report I'm really really liking it. First and foremost the plot is moving super super fast and so it's honestly very hard to put down. The conspiracy is blooming as I was sort of anticipating going into this and I just love following our characters as they're solving stuff. Anna is definitely a boss and a character who is like very capable, very knowledgeable, and it doesn't really reveal a lot of what her train of thought is thinking. And so our main character Din is like doing his job trying to help her and support her in any way that he can, but oftentimes not necessarily seeing the whole tapestry that she's seeing. By proxy, both the reader and him are surprised at the same time, which also tends to be rather satisfying. Also, alongside just the mystery being pretty compulsive, and we're very much now at the beginning of this like larger conspiracy and mystery, we're introduced to like different players, different connected individuals who will be helpful to the investigation based on their own individual skill set, but clearly perhaps have their own motivations and secrets that they're hiding, which would which I imagine will be fun to sort of parse out. But alongside this sort of mystery getting bigger, we've also been able to move to a new location and learn more about this world, which is a very strange one. It kind of gives like Attack on Titan and Godzilla had a baby in terms of the villain of this book because okay obviously there's whatever politics are happening within this world but this empire is under constant threat of these like giant monsters attacking their like land and destroying all the people and the buildings that live within this if they can like breach these giant massive structures called seawalls um so it has this sort of end of the world-esque feeling to it and so whatever machinations like humans are doing to get more power like the pure force of a leviathan in this world will like supersede anything you know what i mean and it's hard to like harness this power directly you know but so there's that and then in combination i would almost describe this setting as like steampunk ish but it's like yes there's technology but there's also a lot of science but not just like with machines like there's lots of advancements and like Again, this sort of fungus, organic matter and material that people use to like upgrade and change their bodies. Um, there's lots of like organisms that exist in this empire that people have to get like vaccinated against. Like this is sort of like natural innovation combined with some technological innovation. And there's like these monsters and there's like a standard empire. Like there's a lot of different inputs happening and it's cool and it's working well in my mind um but yeah all that to say is I'm reading this book quickly I'm excited to see what's gonna happen next I plan to read more today but I want to get some other stuff done first right now but 140 pages have been read and I will keep y'all posted hello you might hear a noise it's my tea kettle because I'm gonna make some tea to sit down and enjoy the rest of my evening which is going to include reading. I got this new mug. Have I shown this off yet? I don't remember, but it has clouds on it and it, it's truly so delightful. I think I'm going to go with an Earl Grey tea. So just a dash caffeinated, but like not really. Lavender Earl Grey. It's a new sachet of tea, so I've been looking forward to trying this. Ooh, Ooh that is quite nice smelling. And now we pour and then we steep. And I think I'm gonna watch Love is Blind, drink my tea, unwind. We have leftovers for dinner tonight because I made all that curry last night, which is truly the best feeling. And then I'm gonna do some more reading, I think, because I am so into my book. I just kind of, today kind of <laughs> flew away from me. We've had some people have to come by our house because we have some boring homeowner related issues that aren't fun. <laughs> or exciting to update y'all, but we've had a lot of people buy the house for it because of it. So the day kind of just got away from me, but we're back on track. Tea, reality TV, I will be thriving soon. Loves below deck. Isn't that right, Millie? And leftovers are all heated up. We're going to enjoy and continue to watch Bravo. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It is another 
beautiful day to be honest we've had a lot of rain this winter which honestly has been really nice one because we need the rain um but we have like really beautiful weather this week so i'm going to try to pressure myself to one to go outside more read outside and just in general touch some grass which i feel like fundamentally is something i need <laughs> with that in mind though i have been reading my book and i'm making good progress i'd say i'm like two-thirds of the way done and i definitely plan to read much more of this today especially because the plot is really starting to accelerate i'm really liking this book um the humor continues to be there likable characters continue to be there and there's kind of like mysteries on all fronts and so i feel like Robert Jackson Bennett does a good job of having like mini reveals along the way where you're like shocked in a small scale, but you know like this little mini reveal is just opening the door wider for like a larger, bigger conspiracy to try to figure out. I really like our main character, Din. I really like following the story from their point of view, not only because of their unusual set of skills, but really just like their personality. I also love the camaraderie that's beginning to grow between him and Anna. They're both very strange, but very, very likable. And Din himself has kind of a mysterious background that I'm enjoying learning more and more about. He obviously has his skill set um, that he's been imbued with, which allows him to remember every detail, but he had a complicated experience in past in um, the academy where he trained. And there's just some like mysterious stuff about him and some skills that sort of like appear. It's just like really piquing my interest and I'm excited to learn about that. And so like, I feel like this book is just successful because we have good characters, an interesting mystery, and the world itself is so weird that I also love learning about it. Like these giant Leviathan monsters. Of course, like in any society, there are rich and powerful people who don't care about anything but being rich and powerful. And of course that is beginning to get in the way. Um, but yeah, this book reads so fast and I just love the dialogue and just new characters that are mixed in. You also have this feeling of not totally knowing who to trust. Aspects of the investigation itself are compromised, which just works really well. So anyway, I'm officially on part four of the book. I want to maybe finish this today, but we will see. I have quite a bit of stuff to do, but a girl can dream, especially if I don't get too distracted by hospital playlists. What happens is I'm really liking this book. And then I go, I'm just going to watch a little bit of hospital playlist. Each episode of hospital playlist is an hour and a half. And then I only watch hospital playlists. Like Clay is constantly like, Reagan, don't you need to read? And I'm like, just press play. Don't ask questions. I'm so obsessed with that show. I can't stop watching, but I'm also really into my book. It's a balancing act. It's a balancing act. But anyway, I'm gonna go get dressed, start my day, get it together, so hopefully I can read more and watch hospital playlists. The balance I'm trying to strike. And lunch is served. Hello, I have my book and I have a cup of tea and you and I, pals, are gonna go sit outside and enjoy the weather because it's actually beautiful outside. It's like 70 degrees, it's sunset, so I'm not gonna get a sunburn. We're gonna sit and do some reading. If anyone was wondering, I'm truly thriving. I'm just waiting for Clay to finish up work and then we're gonna go for a walk. The weather is glorious. I want a smoothie and then dinner, hospital playlist. And then I really think I'm gonna be able to finish this book. I'm almost on page 300 now. Things are getting wild. I love how the author uses senses in this like sight, smell, I don't know, it's very sensory and it's working quite well. It's me and I have a latte and I have a reading update. I have done a terrible job blogging in the past 24 hours, but that's all gonna change now because we're getting back on track. I have 50 pages left of The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett and I'm gonna sit down now and finish it and I could not be more excited about it. I had a blast reading this. I love the genre combination of thriller, investigation, fantasy, because it's like I get to investigate not only a crime, but there's variables of this new fantastical world that I want have to understand, but could also impact the mystery in ways I can't anticipate because I might not fully understand like the magic or the science or what have you in this world and setting, which always just makes for like fun variables and layers to a mystery story, you know what I mean? But I'm gonna sit down now, finish this, give you my final thoughts and feelings, and then I'm also gonna start The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber today as well. You know, the, it is February. I haven't read 
really one romantic book this month. So I thought let's read something fun and light and then I'm gonna pivot to another anticipated read for my next vlog. But this is the plan. Wrapping this up, starting this, thrilled about it. Lunch is served. A current favorite of mine to make is just some miso soup and like a couple pot stickers. It's filling, it's delicious. And I just love soup. I'm trying to eat as much soup as I can before it gets too hot for soup again. Though I still eat soup in the summer, but you know what I mean. Let's finish this book together. report I've officially finished The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett and I really enjoyed this book. I wouldn't say this is my favorite book by this author I've ever read but I've literally given I think every book I've ever read of his five stars <laughs> so I hope it's very apparent that I still really 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 enjoyed this and I really love his characters and the camaraderie he's able to create while also creating a world that's interesting, dynamic, intense, full of corruption, or just things to explore. Like there's intrigue there, there's darkness there, but there is such fun and unlikely bonds that are also formed. I also love that he tends to always include a romantic element. It's not even like a subplot. If anything, it's like a tertiary plot line, but it's always really sweet. And like having characters that you love have like a moment of, um, like romantic or like connection in that way too. I just feel like adds like something else to his stories. And I always actually really enjoy his romances quite a bit. Um, I feel like he plots them with a lot of care. Two of his series actually also feature queer romances as well, just to give that a shout out. But I really liked this. I was hooked on the mystery. I loved all the different reveals along the way. I'm excited for more books in this world. I really feel like it can grow on itself quite successfully. And I'm just like, I had a great time reading this. Love a detective style story. It was just a blast. And I would highly recommend this book, especially if you love like whodunits, mysteries, corruption, like a character that's like, pulling all the pieces together and kind of has these various grand reveal moments where you're like, ah, that makes sense. You know, it's just satisfying in that way and a lot of fun. Uh, and yeah, I, I really liked it. So cheers. So yeah, finished my first book. I'm going to pivot to book number two tonight and wrap up this vlog tomorrow probably. But for now, I'm finishing up work. I have some errands. I need to run post work. And then we're going to settle in, eat some leftovers, watch the last episode of season one of Hospital Playlist tonight, which I cannot wait. And then just kind of lay low, which is the best. Hello, I am laundered and all set to have a relaxing night of television watching. And lucky for us, I cooked dinner last night and we have leftovers. It's this tasty little like Cajun rice and sausage dish. So we're gonna heat that up and steam some broccoli. Ooh, and I think I'm gonna have an orange right now as well, because that sounds divine because it's still citrus season, sumo oranges. So it looks like comes back from his walk, make him heat this up and peel me this orange. <laughs> it's time to finish season one of Hospital Playlist. Hi friends, we've officially finished season one of Hospital Playlist. I cried so much. It was so good. I could not recommend that show more. And now we're gonna start The Ballad of Never After which I'm so excited for. This is like fairy tale, charming, fun, following. Apologies, Clay was brushing his teeth. But what I was saying was, I'm excited to read this because it's so charming and cute. It has a romantic lean, but it also very much reads like a fairy tale. And I love the main character, Evangeline. I'm just like rooting for her. I'll talk about more about this in the morning and in general, but I'm gonna start reading now to see how far I can get before I 
fall asleep. Hi friends and welcome to the end of the vlog the next day. I'm gonna start with The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber because I haven't really done a reading check in for this yet but I was able to read between last night and this morning about 120 pages and this is book two to like a YA fantasy series that honestly I am just so charmed by. I love kind of the lower stakes nature of this but still all of the inputs are just like really 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 endearing. I love the main character and it really does have this like fairy tale-esque style to it. We basically follow our main character Evangeline and at the beginning of book one her heart is broken and she's desperate to try to get back the love of her life. So she goes to someone called the Prince of Broken Hearts, who's kind of like a god in this world, and makes a deal with him basically for three kisses of his choosing. He'll help her solve her broken heart, if you will. But of course she gets pulled into all different types of shenanigans. She's also pulled into different prophecies and all of this stuff and her life gets complicated very very quickly and she also has to like work alongside the Prince of Broken Hearts quite a bit despite her misgivings about him. Book one was so fast and easy to read like it's very straightforward but I also feel like it works and Evangeline is like a very naive but rootable character and she's growing and learning and like the whole thing just like really warms my heart. So I picked up book two and I'm reading this book I feel like even faster than book one. The plot takes place like right after the end of book one. It's very 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 quick and there's lots of fallout at the end of book one but also quickly like new stuff is introduced and like everything just matches the tone and style of this world so well. Like even the conflicts like again sort of mesh perfectly into this storybook quality to it. I love that we're watching Evangeline grow into herself, grow into her power. Like she doesn't lose her good heart but she's also more comfortable standing up for herself. The dynamic between her and the Prince of Broken Hearts is so good. Love is centered to the story in a lot of ways but also it's much more of like a coming of age tale. And anyway I read those 120 pages so fast. I love it. <laughs> and then of course obviously I read the entirety of The Tainted Cup which was definitely sort of the center book of this vlog. This is just over 400 pages and I loved every single second of it. I love this author. I love this sort of whodunit mystery in a very strange sci-fi world and setting. I was on the edge of my seat and I was very pleased with not only like the beginning and middle but also the end and the reveals and I'm looking forward to more books set in this world. But yeah I read over 500 pages for this vlog. I'm very pleased with everything I was able to pick up. This is officially my second highly anticipated release of the month and you know what? They're not ending because I have another one on my shelf I can't wait to get to. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye!